So from now until launch of Tears of the Kingdom, uh, we're going to be going over some of my favorite Zelda theories and maybe ones I'm not so sure about and discussing them. But I thought before we dove into those Zelda theories that we first need to have an honest conversation about Tears of the Kingdom. You see, it's been in development for like five years and three months or some crazy number. It's the longest a Zelda game has ever been in development for. Uh, <laughs> we have a release date, right? May 12th? Cool. We know when it's coming. We're less than six months from release. And we know almost nothing. We have a title, but that's about it. I don't recall in my life, six months out from a Zelda game releasing, knowing this little about a Zelda game. It's crazy. If I, a lot of us thought we were going to get blown out at, you know, well, the Game Awards. We thought there would actually be one. And Tears of the Kingdom did win. I'm on record saying if Tears of the Kingdom won most anticipated game, we would see it at the Game Awards. And it won most anticipated game, and we didn't see it. In fact, it was kind of a weird Jeff Keighley tease because we saw Horizon VR stuff, and it started out in the clouds, and so Tears of the Kingdom won, and obviously we know Link's in the clouds, and so the next trailer had clouds, and it wasn't Zelda, as we now know. It's interesting how Jeff Keighley did that. He clearly knew what he was doing and how he lined up the show, but I also think it's interesting that Nintendo chose not to advertise it there. Now, we do know Nintendo didn't know show, right? They not only won a bunch of awards and had the Mario movie there, we got Bayonetta Origins, and yes, brand new news on Fire Emblem Engage. And Fire Emblem Engage is something we need to remember because I honestly think Fire Emblem Engage somehow is why we don't know that much about Tears of the Kingdom. Seems strange, right? Like Zelda is a such a, a bigger IP at this point than Fire Emblem. Why would they hold back on Zelda information due to that? Well, in part, my theory is because it is that much bigger. They really want Fire Emblem Engage to do well, and they want to make sure that it gets a fair marketing opportunity. So now that Scarlet and Violet is out, all of the marketing is turning to Fire Emblem Engage and that's the game they're going to push. Now, I don't think they're going to hold back Zelda information for Bayonetta Origins. After all, it is a prequel, but it's a spin-off game. I don't think that Zelda will be held back for that. But for Fire Emblem Engage, which they are treating like a massive release, we're getting brand new information on this game daily. You got Literally, if I was a Fire Emblem YouTube channel, I would have an unlimited amount of content to make right now because of how much information is dropping and I thought at this point, I'd be able to do the same for Zelda. And while I'm going to be creating a lot of Tears of the Kingdom videos, especially as my second video of the day, I am doing it based off of opinions, discussions, and thoughts, rather than actual information, because it comes so little. I mean, we had just the tiniest bit of information land over the weekend about you know the dubs being done for the Spanish version, and that news video hit 20,000 views, my largest video of the year. How did that happen? Well, because the thirst is real. The fervor is real. Everybody wants to know even the smallest little details. Like if Nintendo hires a new employee for Tears of the Kingdom, you guys want to know about it. Like it's insane how much people want to know, but how little we actually know. So talking to theories will be fun, but honestly, it's a lot of filler content because I can't wait. I'm not Nintendo. They're waiting. I'm not waiting anymore. We're starting our run up to Tears of the Kingdom today. And I wish Nintendo would as well. My ideal, at least at this point, is that once Fire Emblem Engage comes out, I think the Zelda train begins. Now, I do think that we'll wait until the February Direct, which should happen around the middle of February. I think either the beginning or end of the show will end with a massive Tears of the Kingdom trailer. And then they're going to continue this marketing. They'll do tweets and interviews and all that. There might even be a dedicated Zelda Direct in April like they've done for other games. We could get the announcement of, you know, an, an OLED edition. There's other theories out there as well, though, too, that one of the reasons we haven't seen this game yet, like really get blown out, really have a full understanding of what Tears of the Kingdom is, just a bunch of guesses based on less than six minutes of footage, is the potential of a new system. Now, I'm not sitting here 
diving in on the new system train. You guys know the Switch Pro, Switch 2. This stuff has been beat to death for a couple of years. So I'm not fully diving in on that train, but I can't ignore that it's a valid theory. It's one that I know Andres Restart brings up in some of his videos about how maybe the reason we know so little is Nintendo's waiting to unveil that next system because they want to unveil the system and they want to use this game as the centerpiece to sell the system at launch. And so they're waiting to blow it out until they can really show it in this best light. You know, like dropping a 4K trailer. I, yeah, look, it's a valid theory. It is possible. We have no idea what Nintendo is doing behind the scenes. So I have to bring this up as, well, I think it might be due to Fire Emblem Engage and they just want to give it its fair marketing run. It is possible that it's really about new hardware. We have to lend a little credence to the hardware stuff as well because May is a very weird month to release Zelda. At least in March, we can understand a March release because that's the end of the fiscal year and Nintendo likes to have a boost at the end of every fiscal year and then it also helps start the next fiscal year. So it sort of helps out both years at once. But May is not only not the exact beginning of the next fiscal year, that would be April, it is a month into it, but just before summer. So it's when everyone's still in school when it comes to college or, or you know high school and all that. People are still in school that might want to play this game. We're not to the summer months, and this isn't a major holiday period. This to me signifies a couple things. One, they think Zelda can sell no matter when they release it. Probably true, especially brand new games like this, especially ones to the level of Tears of the Kingdom. But also, maybe that timing is because that's when Nintendo will have enough stock of whatever this new system is to launch it that month. Now, they do launch their hardware in weird months. We've seen launches in October, November, March. So Nintendo doesn't seem to care when they launch a game. They care that they have something to pair with the launch. And Tears of the Kingdom would really be the next major game to do that with. After that would probably be a Mario game, maybe a Mario Kart or something like that. But I don't think we're getting Mario Kart next year, right? Like if you think there's new hardware next year, Mario Kart is ain't it. Like we have DLC all the way through next year for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I think we can, can write that one off. But again, this is just one of those theories that exists out there for why we haven't heard much information on this game. There's obviously some negative theories as well. Maybe Nintendo's afraid the game won't be received as well as Breath of the Wild, so they're trying to hide it maybe the overworld is much of the same and they know the criticism's coming so they're just kind of keeping a lot behind closed doors then again nintendo knew this about games like triforce heroes and we still knew a crap load about that six months before release so i don't know that i buy that either and they know this game's going to sell really well and literally just showing the little snippets they have have already gotten some people excited so what theory do you think it is? Do you think it's just they really want to give Fire Emblem Engage its own window? Do you think it has to do with new hardware? Or do you think there's something else? Let's get the theories rolling on why Nintendo has not shown us more of this game. And we'll be back again tomorrow to dive into some other story-related theories that I guess you could argue is potential spoilers, but it's just guesses based on a very minute amount of information. Or who knows, maybe we end up getting a smidge of news we can talk about. I don't know what tomorrow will bring just yet. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.